we can redeem him. Well, no, sometimes you can't. Sometimes you just gotta slice your enemy in half with a laser sword that's fueled by a crystal and powerful, but no. Talking Phantom Menace? Yep, I'm talking get down, Anakin. <laughs> I do love Star Wars. Now, don't get me wrong. Agreed. And growing up, you don't really realize the technical difficulties of the prequels. They straight up say Anakin doesn't have a father. And now I'm just like, oh my gosh, he's Jesus. Like, <laughs> <laughs> what, uh, what works of fiction or nonfiction can we take from George Lucas? How about the Bible? All the stars were aligned for them. They had all the latest technology. They were coming off the original trilogy. Episode one is kind of like the ugly redheaded stepchild. It's just like it has its place, but every for the lack of better words, everybody on it for the most part. And it's, there's valid criticisms. I mean, why is Jar Jar Binks in there? What's Misa gonna do for the for the saga? <laughs> you mean Jar Jar Binks, the Sith Lord? Why does Mace Windu hate children? Where does the Force say like, oh, we'll train him if they're three and a half years old, but if he's four, nope, he's done. He's like, get get him out of here. It's speaking of children too. It's kind of funny that the actor who plays Anakin, young Anakin, is one of those classic stories when you look up people's lives who've tanked after. Like he blames Episode One for ruining his life like, <laughs> to this day. <laughs> but the only other movie that I remember him being in was. Uh, Jingle All the Way with Arnold Schwarzenegger and Turbo Man. That's him? You, you didn't know that? No, I didn't. Oh my god, dude. I got the real Turbo Man at home and it's Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> at, at least, the you know, the thing going for him is I would not recognize if I just saw walking down the street. And so at least, he, you know, he's got some protection. That's, that's fair. One thing that I will argue till the end of time is that the Jedi Council is definitely the HOA of the galaxy. Did they just show up and were like, yeah, well, we have a nice temple and stuff, but if you're not cool, if you don't got the right genes, they're like, nope, no metachlorians, you're done, bro. Even George Lucas said that they're supposed to be like the U.S. Marshals or like the Old West. They're meant to hunt down, they're basically high-speed bounty hunters. So maybe Boba Fett? Why, why couldn't he have been a Jedi? The fact of the matter is that anyone on that council is probably worth... I don't know, 100 normal soldiers, maybe? And they just like sit around and argue about politics. <laughs> but it's like, what are you gonna say? Like, no, I don't want this. Wait, like, wait. are you sure you don't want to follow the rules? <laughs> whoa, 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 cool down, man. <laughs> Do you think the, the other council members had, you know, body doubles? Like Queen Amidala? That would be a plot twist. Going from A New Hope, you have this idea that you know, it's pretty much just, you know, Obi-Wan is like the one Jedi. But then, you know, as the spin-offs go, whoosh, comic book, whoosh, book series, whoosh, TV series, they're like, oh, don't worry, there's like half of the Jedi Order actually lives. But JK, we didn't kill them all horribly in front of you, systematically one at a time. <laughs> just the young ladies. <laughs> <laughs> I have to think, like, if, if I'm Liam Neeson or Samuel L. Jackson, I'm like, yeah, I was in the cool sequels, you know? <laughs> the Star Wars universe in general is pretty polarizing. Like, you got one camp of people are, that love Star Wars and will go see it just because it's Star Wars. And then the other camp is people that are like, I ain't seen a single Star Wars movie and I ain't gonna. I have to see the content, but I'm getting more and more creative to make sure I don't give any money to Disney doing it. Eight was the last nail in the coffin. Eight was trash. Episode nine was the first one. I was like, ah, I have to see this movie, but I can't pay for it. I ended up watching it when it came to Disney Plus from, get this, a friend lent their account to my friend who I watched it with. So that's three tiers of separation to Disney Plus. <laughs> Better than eight. But not good. That's a lot of zigzagging to get to the point of, oh, I hate this. I don't, I don't want to do this again. I think what it really hit me when I started to be more critical of the newer Star Wars movies is when Solo came out. Did you, did you see Solo? I have seen Solo twice, mistaken. Spoiler alert, if you haven't seen it, they they ruined like one of the characters that I grew to know and love like from the original trilogy when he gets his name Han Solo. Because he goes to some stupid checkpoint, and the guard's just like, what's your name? What's your people? 
And he just goes, I don't have any people. And the guard just goes, solo? Really? That's the that's the writing we're working with here? Solo was, I think, the turn for the worse. It was like Rogue One, as a, you could potentially call it a money grab film. Um, it's not bad. Like no, I, I enjoyed Rogue bad. One. And I don't think it was a typical, like, oh, this is going to be a feel-good story. And I was like, they literally hold each other while the planet explodes at the end. Like, that's, you're like, I'm like, mm, popcorn. Oh, oh, shit, they're death. You know, when George Lucas set out with the Star Wars franchise, it was more about the mythology, the creatures, the Force, the Jedi Order, and actual science fiction like, oh, it's the hyperdrive, you know, it's either on or off or bugged or not bugged. And as we went on to movies, they kept having to, like, add to the sand structure. Gosh, in, in Rise of Skywalker with, like, the horses on top of the ship. Like, clearly where you cannot breathe. Like, I don't know about those space horses, what they're breathing, what the, what's in those oats. I, mean, I don't know. You know what I mean? It's like, it just got steadily more and more ridiculous that it lost its charm of hokiness. The stakes aren't really raised ever what's the John Boyega's character I'm blanking real bad Finn yeah Finn so, FN2 something something <laughs> yeah something no, no, no. Game of Thrones I, I'm from Game of Thrones lady we obviously he had like some like he dislikes the Empire and he leaves I was like what would have made him even dislike the Empire even more as if his friend Rose died but no like oh, the force ga- saved me before the big battle even though my house got blown up it's yeah, like, you mean Rose, the pseudo, like, we didn't like the whole Ray Finn thing, so we just slyly inserted this alternate character? She should have got blown up while dropping bombs in a battle, but no, because Disney was probably in the back like, ha ha, no killing, ha ha, unless it's main characters, ha ha. Luke dies, come back. Yoda dies, come back. Leia dies, come back. Han oh, yeah, dies, she can use the force, by back. the way, too, but we don't talk about that ever again after that one part. And then they're just like, oh, let's kill Ben. Because <laughs> he's, you know, the only character we pumped a bunch of actual, like, transformation. And so he has to die. So many good opportunities to, to make some kind of tangible change and, like, effective story. And they just botched it. Every time. Botched it. Like, you're like, an entire prequel trilogy is based on Anakin Skywalker worrying about the death of Padme. It's like, oh, well, we can heal him. And we never talk, we never do that again either. Also in episode one, they're trying to go through to get to the Trade Federation. We'll just speed away with our force super speed powers that never comes up in the series again. That's right. It's just like quick, and then they're gone. Personally, I think a lot of that was probably excelled by the video games. Oh, we, we need this button to do something. All right, let's make a force dash. <laughs> yeah, and then, you know, something. You know, the next person who gets the IP is like, oh, look, they can force jump. Oh, why can't they, you know, fly now? Which is funny in, in like hindsight, because a lot of people who attack the prequels, one of their big things is the lightsaber fights. Four, five, six, Star Wars, the lightsaber fights are very mundane compared to even, you know, the end of Revenge of Sith. You have all this weird acrobatic well, stunts in, you know, seven, eight, nine, and yet, the actual amount of lightsaber battles in that trilogy is dismal. Like, this is what they did with writing. They were like, oh, here's a good idea. Oh, nope. JK. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, we're done with this. Imagine being George at this point. I, I imagine he's just like, he has his own, like, bat cave, but he's just sulking in the darkness, just like, looking at a painting of Jar Jar Binks. Phantom Menace. The last, like, hour of the movie, I think is pretty good. Them assaulting the palace. And then you have Ray Park just caught up. When that sequence happens, I'm like, yeah. like, 10-year-old me was like, oh, dear, this is about to get real, real up in here. That's almost like the gas station pizza of Star Wars, mm. where if I'm really hungry or, like, I just want to see a movie and just zone out and enjoy it, I'm, I'm still going to eat the pizza, even though I know, like, oh, it's just Domino's. It's not, mm. <laughs> it's not special. <laughs> I'm glad you brought up Duel of the Fates because that track and that ambiance, and I was talking earlier about the lightsabers, like, that is the first major lightsaber fight Star Wars fans got to see. Like, Vader, Luke, they duped it out. It was good, but this brought it, to, you know, till 11. You're, you're made to believe that Vader's this huge, powerful figure, and that's solely because 
that's that's his whole mo but in episode one you're like oh like there's sith out there they're just as good as us but you also see that happen in real time yeah they tell you like bears are dangerous but until you see like a bear actually do some like actual bad bear stuff you're like oh wow this makes sense now because i actually saw it happen i understand Darth Maul didn't technically die after being sliced in half, which, take it what you will. Kenobi! <laughs> but that was the end from him in the in the prequels. For not speaking more than probably two lines, he was a cool villain. What a different movie it would have been if somehow Darth Maul could have lived. They start throwing in characters with Attack of the Clones and Revenge of the Sith. So like, here's Dooku, and then here's Grievous. And I think they're all just trying to be Darth Maul. And I was like, what if Darth Maul could have survived for three episodes? And rather than having a Darth Vader figure that is redeemed, it was that like ultimate really satisfying destruction of a villain who was a total bane for three movies. There's no comedic, like there's the meme of Grievous and Kenobi is just, oh, hello there. It's like, Kenobi. It's like, there, there was none of that in episode one. It was, oh, uh, I just killed your master who you love and who's taught you everything. And by the way, I'm going to kill you now too. Tone was real. Like you felt, like I said, there was stakes in episode one. Yeah, you don't feel as intimidated by Grievous because he mounts off. And when he dies, it's like a good scene, but he doesn't seem that scary. You know, he shrugs his little shawl off and he's like, I've been trained in your Jedi arts by Count Dooku. And what does he do? Spins his robot hands into one motion. Like, that. I've seen Dooku do that a thousand times. <laughs> like, that's it. He's like, what do you got? Oh, I'll try spinning. That's a good trick. Like, there we go again. Like, just... <laughs>